For those of you who uh, don't know me, my name is Samir Khan, and I'm one of a team of application engineers at MapleSoft. My role is to help our customers understand and use our technology. And in this short webinar, I'll introduce you to some thermal modeling concepts in our systems engineering tool, MapleSim. So, what is MapleSim? Well, MapleSim helps you model multi-domain systems. For example, a typical user could be an automotive designer. The designer may use MapleSim to model a vehicle from the ground up, and that includes everything from the interaction of the roads with the tires, the transmissions, the driveline, the engine model, the power electronics, and maybe even a chassis and a driver model as well. Some parts of that vehicle, for example the battery or the engine, will produce heat due to combustion or electrochemistry. And some operational aspects of that vehicle, such as the fuel efficiency, are also impacted by ambient temperature. So there's a real tangible need for thermal modeling in the context of an entire system. And that's where something like MapleSim comes into play. So in this webinar, I'll introduce you to the tools for lumped parameter 1D thermal modeling in MapleSim. I'll also talk about how you can model distributed heat transfer systems as well via discretization of partial differential equations. Um, by the way, this webinar will consist of some combination of slides and in-product demonstrations within MapleSim. So this is the agenda of this presentation, and I actually don't think this uh, agenda reflects the content, content of the webinar. I don't think it's quite complete yet. I'm not going to go through the agenda in great detail, but I'd like to give everyone a sense of what can be achieved with MapleSim's thermal modeling tool, and perhaps more importantly, what this means in the context of systems modeling. Before I start, what I'd like to do is introduce you to our technology stack. Some of you may not be familiar with what MapleSoft do, so let's put everything into context first. We have two primary products. Maple is our brand ambassador, and it's our tool for math and modeling. It's a powerful symbolic and numeric math engine with visualization tools, cogeneration tools, and connectivity tools. It also has functionality for, say, um, automatic parallelization of math routines as well. And you can have free runtime distribution of Maple applications through the Maple player. Around Maple, we've also built an ecosystem of supporting technologies for global optimization, deploying applications to the web via MapleNet, and grid computing as well. Now, several years ago, in response to the demands of industry, we released a tool called MapleSim. MapleSim is a block diagram tool for multi-domain physical modeling. Unlike uh, other simulation tools, Maple, with MapleSim you model at the physical component level, and I'll speak about that in detail later. MapleSim actually runs on top of Maple, in the same way that Simulink runs on top of uh, MATLAB. This means that MapleSim can use the symbolic and numeric math technology that we've refined over the last 25 years to optimize and solve system models. Moreover, we've uh, supported the design process in MapleSim with a range of tools for uh, real-time co-generation for Simulink, LabVIEW, and DSpace. We also support new technologies like the functional mock-up interface, and that's a new development which allows you to exchange model information between different tools from different vendors. By and large, I'll concentrate on this tool, MapleSim, our systems engineering tool, although we will occasionally dip into Maple. Um, a lot of what is very unique about MapleSim is as a result of the connectivity with Maple, but we'll talk about that later. Now, I'd like to start off with a gallery of typical thermal applications within MapleSim. This by no means is comprehensive, but they're applications that uh, I and my team have been involved in over the last year or two. Uh, this is actually the HVAC model of a room, and I'll actually show you this model inside MapleSim, so let me just 
bring up Maple Sim, and I'll just load up the HVAC model. So, this model was a model I developed uh, uh, last year. It demonstrates the cooling of a room by a HVAC system. So, it consists of a number of subsystems. We have a PID controller, a digital pulse generator, a non-linear variable air volume box, and a room model. Um, the actual thermal aspect of this model is simply in the room model. If I double click on this subsystem, we drill down and see greater levels of model detail. And we see different types of blocks here. We see sickle flow blocks like gains. We also see physical blocks like this heat capacitor. And I'll speak about this in detail later. This heat capacitor actually has a number of heat inputs. So we have the heat lost due to the door opening and closing in the room, and we also have heat loss uh, or heat gains due to the population of people in the room, computers switching on and off, and so on. All of these individual heats are summed and flow into the heat capacitor. And the heat capacitor increases or decreases in temperature based upon the relative heat flows. Let's go back up to the top level. So with the room model, we're sensing the temperature through a temperature sensor. This inserts a time delay into the system, and that's fed into a PID controller. So this is analogous to the thermostat that you may have uh, in your home heating system. So this takes the set point temperature and the actual temperature of the room, and that puts a signal. The thermostat has a rate limiter to limit the rate at which the, temp at which the uh, uh, output increases or decreases. It also has a dead band of around 0.25 degrees. So the temperature is controlled to plus 0.25 or minus 0.25 degrees above or below the set point. The PID box, the thermostat, outputs a signal to the digital pulse generator. Now, this is a rather more complex connection of signal flow blocks. I won't go into this in too much detail. Let's go up to the main level. But the digital pulse generator sends either an open signal or a closed signal to a nonlinear valve. Based upon the angle of the damper in the valve, a variable amount of air flows into the room and that air cools or heats up the room. Jump back into uh, PowerPoint. I'll jump back into this model later and actually show you it running. Here's another model that uh, I and my team developed earlier this year. This is a model of the thermal properties of a power plant. And um, perhaps uniquely, this model consists almost entirely of custom components. So, as well as the built-in physical modeling components with an Maple Sim, you can extend the component library with custom components, and you create these simply by writing down the equations in the Maple worksheet. Those equations can be in the form of differential equations, state-space models, transfer functions, or a combination of all of those elements. This is a model of an electric furnace. Now, one thing I'd like to stress is that you can use Maple Sim's thermal blocks in the context of a multi-domain block, in the context of a multi-domain model. For example, here I'm modeling the control of an electric furnace with an on-off controller. The on-off controller has hysteresis, and the furnace, this component here, is simply a heating resistor that transforms electrical power, electrical energy, into heat. We have a simple linear relationship between the temperature in the urban and the electrical power supplied. And the on-off controller here simply outputs a Boolean value that's either high or low. That either opens or closes a switch which controls whether the furnace is on or off. The 
virtual thermostat or the set point is programmable. It's simply a lookup table with various temperatures for the uh, different parts of the day. And the external temperature is simply a data file with temperatures that vary over a very long 24-hour period. Now, by integrating the total power fed to the heating resistance and multiplying that by a gain, you can actually compute the total cost of heating. And this is a thermal model of uh, an entire automotive. It consists of a mean value engine model and an automatic transmission. All the lost power is assumed to be converted to heat. The engine temperature is actually controlled using a liquid cooling system with a radiator and a fan. And Maple Sims thermal modeling tools play a small but critical part in this model. And I'll return to the concept of thermal modeling in automotives later. And in this model, a controller regulates the heating of a house given disturbances in the temperature and of the environment. In fact, let me just show you this model in Maple Sim. So the house actually consists of this uh, subsystem. It has eight rooms, each modelled with a lumped mass with heat conduction to adjacent rooms. The rooms are actually divided into two zones so that the temperature of each zone can be individually controlled. Now that was a brief overview of the type of thing that we do inside Maple Sim. So we model heat um, so we model thermal systems in the context of an entire system. Now, what can you do with Maple Sim's thermal modeling tools and what can't you do? Well one common theme in all of the applications I've shown you is that we're modeling heat changes in the context of an entire system. That's known as 1D modeling or lump parameter modeling. And perhaps more importantly, what can't you do? What's not in the design spec? Well, we can't do CFD or FEM type applications where we're modeling, say, the precise thermal propagation of heat across a complex geometry or shape like this engine manifold. So that does leave a wide range of applicability of what you can do inside Maple Sim. So we can model lump parameter systems. We can also model heat propagation across simple spatial geometries such as rods, flat plates, and so on. Um, Maple Sim is actually built on top of technology called Medallica, and I'll speak about that later. And we can also export system models to C code, S functions, and uh, lab view as well. So let's move on to what tools we have in MapleSim for modeling thermal systems. Now, I have a gallery of components uh, in this PowerPoint slide here. And they're all sourced from this palette inside MapleSim the thermal modeling palette. So we simply drag and drop components from this palette onto our workspace and connect them together. Now, as I said, we can also create our own custom components as well. However, these components can be divided into two primary categories. So I've just grayed out some of the blocks and the blocks that are left are a subset of the main thermal library. And these blocks are generally used to model the cooling of machines with air or water. So here we have pipes, pumps, valves, ambient, uh, various uh, temperature and energy sensors and sources as well. And these blocks generally have a very specific use, a very specific application domain, that of machine cooling. These blocks, however, have a much wider applicability. They're generally used for 
1D thermal modeling. That consists of heat sinks, heat sources, heat transfer mediums, sensors, and blocks for setting thermal boundary conditions. Now, there are other components within MapleSim which have connectivity to the thermal domain, and these, I think, are largely electrical components. So we have things like heating diodes, heating semiconductors, heating resistors. I'll briefly introduce the heating resistor later, although I think you've already seen that in the context of the electrical furnace model. Now, a lot of what is very unique about Maple Sim is because of our connectivity with Maple. With Maple, you can quickly create your own custom components for Maple Sim as well simply by writing down the differential equations, the algebraic expressions, uh, the DAs, or a, or a combination of those elements. So, for example, these are simply differential equations that I've used to define the dynamics of a specific thermal custom component here. I'll show you the custom component template later, but it's a, a very interesting, very unique technology. Bear in mind that these equations are written down in natural math notation, so we have overline division, differentials look like differentials, and Greek letters look like Greek letters. You can also write the delicate code to create custom components as well, and that's something I very briefly mentioned earlier. Medallica is a physical modeling language pioneered in Sweden in the late 90s, and it's now rapidly growing in acceptance as the physical modeling language of choice. In fact, all of MapleSim's built-in components are written in Medallica. Um, Medallica is a programmatic environment, so it does require some effort to learn, but it does give you a lot of flexibility in what you, what you can actually model. Uh, there is a large library of pre-engineered Medallica components available, uh, and many of these are free. Some, however, are actually commercial third-party libraries. Uh, you can actually find out more about Medallica at medallica.org. Now, let's talk about two of MapleSim's built-in thermal components in detail, the thermal capacitor and the thermal conductor. Now, the thermal, the thermal capacitor is simply a lumped mass. Think of it just like a great big chunk of metal that's at a constant temperature throughout, and it acts as an energy store. It has one physical connection at the very bottom. This carries information about temperature and heat flow. If the thermal capacitor is at a lower temperature than the component it's connected to, heat flows into the capacitor and it increases in temperature. If it's at a higher temperature than the component it's connected to, heat flows out of it and it decreases in temperature. And this is simply the differential equation which describes its dynamics. So C is the heat capacitance, capital T is simply the temperature, and Q dot is simply the heat flow rate. That would be in uh, joules per second or watts. This is the uh, thermal conductor. It controls the rate at which heat enters or leaves uh, a system, or the heat capacitor. And as its name, name implies, it uh, uh, simulates thermal conductivity. Again, this is the equation which describes the rate of heat flow across the thermal conductor. It's simply an algebraic expression. The heat flow is simply the temperature difference between both ends multiplied by, the con multiplied by a constant. That constant is known as the conductance of the thermal conductor. And for a rectangular flow channel, the conductance is simply the thermal conductivity of the medium multiplied by the cross-sectional area perpendicular to flow divided by the total length of travel. So if the cross-sectional area is larger, heat flows across it at a larger rate. If the length of the medium is longer, heat flows across it at a slower rate. Now, these are the parameters for the thermal, for the heat capacitor and the thermal conductor. And I'll show you these menus in MapleSim later. 
Now, when it comes to systems modelling, um, engineers generally know what temperatures and temperature ranges are sensible, well, in the context of most things, and that's something uh, that you generally don't get with other physical domains, because most things generally vary in temperature between a relatively narrow temperature range. It could be 0 to 100 or 200 to 500. Um, for example, if we get a room that varies in temperature between 2,000 and 5,000 degrees Celsius, we know that something is probably very, very wrong with our physical model. That intuitive sense of what the right temperature is and what the right temperature is isn't as firmly developed for other physical domains. Um, for example, not many people generally know what torque you need to apply to the lid of a jar in order to uh, open it. So, let me just jump back into MapleSim and I'll show you a very simple model with the uh, heat capacitor. So, all I'm going to do is drag it onto a workspace like so. This is its parameter menu. I'm going to enter in the heat capacity let's say 2 joules per Kelvin, so it increases or decreases in temperature for every 2 joules that enter or leave it. We need some kind of t uh, heat input into it. Let's simply have a fixed heat flow with a magnitude of, say, 3 watts, that's 3 joules per second. Uh, let's go back to the heat capacitor. Because its dynamics are defined by a differential equation, we need to give it an initial temperature. And if I right-click on the heat capacitor and attach a probe, I can model its temperature. And we'll have this model run over the first 10, over 10 seconds. So if I run this, Maple Sim goes through a number of well-defined steps. First of all, based upon the blocks it sees on screen, it derives the differential equations which define the dynamics. It then optimizes them to a computationally efficient form, and then it solves those optimized equations uh, um, numerically. Now, as I mentioned, much of what is unique about MapleSim is provided by Maple. If I go to the View menu and select Create Attachments, I can attach a number of Maple templates to this model. There are templates for generating standalone C code, for creating road custom components, and there's a wide variety of other templates as well. But what I can also do is actually extract and manipulate the equations of a Maple SIM model in Maple using this template, the equations template. So let's click on create attachment, and you can see that we've just jumped into another product. So we have Maple Sim in the background and Maple in the foreground. And this is just a very, very simple demo of what this equation template can do. But based upon this block diagram model, I can actually extract the governing differential equations. And here they are. This is, these are the equations in the form I can manipulate with it with Maple symbolic tools. In fact, I'm just going to click on this button. This keeps all of the parameters analytic in MapleSim. So there we go. I have the temperature of the heat capacitor in terms of the heat capacitance and the heat flows into it and out of it. And these equations are actually in the form I can manipulate within MapleSim like so. If you're at all familiar with uh, Maple, you'll know that you'll be able to solve equations like this. Analytically, you'll be able to manipulate them with Maple's full range of uh, symbolic algebra tools. So let's jump back into uh, PowerPoint. Now, let's try to use the heat capacitor and the thermal conductor to model a very simple 1D thermal system. Let's say that we have a perfectly insulated container with two compartments separated by a thermal barrier. 
In the left container, we have a mass of water at an initial temperature and an initial capacitance. Bear in mind that the capacitance is simply the specific heat capacity multiplied by the mass of water in this container. In the right container, we have another liquid, say methanol, again with a known heat capacitance and a known initial temperature. Heat will flow from the water through the thermal barrier into the methanol. And this is conceptually how we would model that system within MapleSim. We'd have two heat capacitors connected by a thermal conductor. And of course, we would have to specify parameters for the two heat capacitors and the thermal conductor as well. For the two heat capacitors, we'd have to set initial conditions. So 393 for the water, 273 for the temperature of the methanol, but also have to specify the heat capacitances as well. For the thermal conductor, bear in mind that that's simply uh, defined by an algebraic equation. We just have to specify the thermal conductance. So that was a simple 1D lump parameter system. Now, you can also model distributed heat transfer systems via a lumped parameter approach as well. Um, bear in mind that you can't really model heat transfer in complex spatial geometries like uh, across uh, the surface of an engine model, uh, the surface of an engine manifold. That's not what MapleSimis tool is uh, intended for. But modeling heat transfer, say, in one or two spatial directions is relatively simple. So this is a classic application which uh, you may be familiar with. It's a metal bar. We know its cross-sectional area, its length, its thermal conductivity, the specific heat capacity, and the density of the bar. The left-hand end is kept at a constant temperature of, let's say, 373 Kelvin, and the bar has a defined initial temperature of 273 Kelvin. So, how would we model the propagation of heat along this bar in MapleSim? Well, I'm actually going to show you two different ways of doing this. The first method involves chopping the bar into a number of sections and modeling the heat flow across each section with thermal conductors and heat capacitors. We could have five different sections, ten different sections, or even a hundred or five hundred. Each section consists of three components, a single heat capacitor and two thermal conductors connected like so. So heat enters from the left and travels to the right. Heat has to travel a distance of L over 2N to the heat capacitor and again, it travels a distance L over 2N to the boundary of the next discretized section. And let me just show you this implementation in MapleSim. So ignore everything else and just pay attention to this group of blocks. This is my discretized heat transfer system. And as demonstrated in the PowerPoint slide, we have a number of discretized sections. This is the content of one of the sections. It's simply the thermal conductor and the heat capacitor. And we've set a boundary condition on the left-hand side. Now, we have another method of modeling this system as well. Now, you may have recognized this application as uh, a classic engineering application of the 1D heat equation, a partial differential equation. MapleSim actually solves differential equations. It doesn't solve partial differential equations. We have to discretize the 1D heat equation along the, spatial, uh, along the spatial dimension before we can use it in the MapleSim model. And this 
is the workflow. From MapleSim would launch Maple, specifically the equations template, the custom component template. We'd then use Maple's functionality to discretize the PDE. That would generate a set of equations. We'd then wrap that set of equations inside a MapleSim component and use that component within our MapleSim model. And that's exactly what I've done here in this subsystem. It's an equation-based custom component that solves the discretized form of the 1D heat equation. So let me double-click on this. You may have seen this, the Maple splash screen, but here we've jumped into what's known as the custom component template. Again, you can, you can access this template simply by the view create attachment menu. Let's just go through this template in a uh, uh, moderate amount of detail. So, this is the actual 1D heat equation which I've physically entered into Maple Sim. Let me just zoom in. As you can see, it's a partial differential equation and it looks like a partial differential equation. It's entered in proper mathematical notation. And we have we've decided that we want 10 discretizations. We want to chop this up into 10 spatial segments. Now, we need some programming code to actually replace the spatial derivatives with a central difference approximation. And we've done that in this code edit region. And this is simply the code. So Maple's programming language is pretty simple to learn. It's just a standard procedural high-level programming language. We can use this procedure on this partial differential equation and it turns it into this. It's a discretized form of this PDE. We've simply replaced the spatial derivative, this term here, with a central difference approximation. Now, with Maple's symbolic algebra tools, we can sweep this discretized equation across the index variable i. Bear in mind that we want n discretizations where n equals 10, and that generates this set of ordinary differential equations. Now, we also need initial conditions as well, and again, we can programmatically generate these using Maple's uh, uh, symbolic manipulation tools. And here, we have a virtual representation of our MapleSim block. There are two connector ports, and I've simply mapped these connector ports to parameters from this set of equations here. Once I've generated the component, I can simply drag it onto my workspace and connect it to the rest of my MapleSim model. Now, if I run this model, we should find that given the parameters given in the model, both approaches give the same result. And I think here we're plotting the temperature uh, across, the, I think, the first 10 hours, and both temperature profiles are the same. So we have two different methods of getting the same result. Now, that was a fairly simple partial differential equation. But you can use that technique to discretize more complex systems of partial differential equations for thermal modeling. Now, this is a double pipe heat exchanger. It's a process unit, a unit operation that's widely used in the chemical industry and in food processing as well. It's just two concentric pipes with two liquids, an inner liquid and an outer liquid flowing in opposite directions. Heat is transferred from one liquid to another across the thermal barrier of the inner pipe wall. Now, the temperature dynamics of the inner liquid, the outer liquid, and the inner pipe wall are actually defined by three coupled partial differential equations. You can actually discretize these equations using the same techniques that I've just shown you with a maple sim. And let me just show you that in a maple sim model.
So this component represents my discretized partial, uh, my discretized uh, uh, countercurrent uh, double pi piece exchanger in the context of a con control loop. If I double click on this component, again, we jump into MapleSim. And again, you can see that I've entered this time three partial differential equations describing the temperature dynamics of the Q wall, the inner fluid, and the outer fluid. And I've used my custom maple function to programmatically replace the spatial derivatives with a central difference approximation. I can then use maple's programmatic functionality to sweep this set of discretized equations to create a set of differential equations. I can programmatically generate my initial conditions. And then I can create a custom component. I can wrap those equations inside a maple sim block, as I've done here. And much of what I'm showing you makes maple sim very unique. There are, I can't think of any, assist, any other systems engineering tools which does this which has that tight connectivity between a systems engineering tool and an analytical tool like Maple. It's a very, very unique uh, offering. Now, we can also model rather more complex subjects, such as vaporization or the boiling or the vaporization of liquids. Um, this is a rather more complex problem because we can't use the techniques that we use for single phase heating or cooling. Um, consider this problem. This is simply a liquid flowing in a pipe. The pipe is surrounded by a heated jacket. Um, the heating medium simply could be hot water or steam. The liquid here enters the pipe in single phase flow. It heats up and then starts vaporizing. So at some point we have two phase flow and we may get pure vapor flow at the outlet. For a full treatment to this problem, you need to solve the equations for the conservation of mass, the conservation of momentum, and the conservation of heat. I'm just going to concentrate on the final part, the conservation of heat. Again, we model this system using a discretized approach. Um, and before I speak about the rest of this slide. Let me just show you that model within MapleSim. So this is a discretized representation of the uh, vaporization of liquid in a pipe. Again, it consists of a number of subsystems. And this is the contents of the subsystem. So we model this in MapleSim by again by chopping up the pipe into a number of discrete sections and performing a mass, momentum, and heat balance on each discretized section on the flow entering and leaving a discrete element. Considering just the heat balance, we end up with this differential equation. So the total heat, or the rate of change of total heat, is simply equal to the heat in minus the heat out plus the heat entering due to the heated jacket. Capital H is the total heat. M dot is the mass flow rate. And H is a quantity known as the specific enthalpy. That's the energy per unit mass. So what would be the first step in actually modeling a system like this? Well, we need two intensive states to calculate the transport properties of that fluid. Um, so we need to predict things like density, viscosity, specific heat capacity, thermal conductivity. Um, for single phase heating, and cooling would use pressure and temperature. However, for a model like this in which we have single phase flow, two phase flow, 
we can't use pressure and temperature because those two quantities aren't independent in the two phase region. They can't be independently varied. So we need to choose two other intensive variable variables. Um, typically, engineers tend to use pressure and specific enthalpy. These two intensive states have the benefit of being independent across all regions uh, of the state of the fluid, whether it's a single phase liquid, two phase flow, or single phase vapor. And all other properties, such as the density, the viscosity, and so on, are calculated via pH, that's pressure specific enthalpy, lookup tables. Now, this is again the heat balance. How would we implement this in Maple Sim? Well, we'd simply sum up all of the individual heat flows. So the heat entering, the heat leaving due to fluid flow, plus the heat entering due to the heated jacket. We'd integrate that to get the total heat, and then we'd add the initial heat at t equals zero. This would be our initial condition. That would give us the total heat. We could then divide that by the density, sorry, by the total mass of liquid in each uh, uh, discretized section to get the specific enthalpy. And that could be fed into the beginning of the model to calculate the heat flows. And this is the implementation of the heat balance in MapleSim itself. Now we need physical properties as well. We need to be able to predict densities, viscosities, transport properties. Well, there's an interesting database of physical properties published by uh, NIST, that's the uh, National Institute of Science and Technology in the US. It's a properties database called RefProp, and you can generate uh, 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 lookup tables for a large variety of uh, liquids and vapors. Those lookup tables can then be implemented in MapleSim. And typically, this is what the lookup table would look like. So, given an input pressure and then an input specific enthalpy, the lookup table would predict the density, the viscosity, the specific heat capacity. Once we have these properties, we can then use those to predict the uh, flow rates in the system. We could use that uh, in the uh, differential equations which describe the uh, conservation of mass or momentum. And this is typically what one of those lookup tables would look like. So let's see how you can connect thermal blocks to other domains. Now, our connections can either be physical connections or signal flow connections. On the left hand side we have an example of a physical connection between the electrical domain and the thermal domain. This is simply heating resistor. Let me show you that model inside MapleSim. So this is simply a heating resistor that converts electrical energy to uh, heat. If I right-click on the component and select the help page, we actually get the equations which define its dynamics. And we can see that we have a simple linear relationship between the resistance and the temperature. On the left-hand side, we have an example of a signal flow connection between the uh, thermal domain and this time the 1D translational mechanical domain. Again, let me show you this within MapleSim. So let's go through this in some detail. So this is actually a spring mass system with a spring whose spring constant decreases linearly as temperature increases. So here we have our mass. We're sensing the velocity of the mass and taking its absolute value. We're multiplying by a gain. 
That value defines the heat flow into a heat capacitor. The heat capacitor represents the thermal mass of the spring and takes into account uh, its specific heat capacity of the material used to construct it. Due to the heat coming in, the temperature of the heat capacitor increases. We're then reading its temperature and multiplying that by a gain, and using that in a simple linear formula to define the spring constant. And that spring constant is fed into the spring here as signal. Now the spring here is again a custom component. If I double check this, again we jump into maple sim. And we're in familiar territory again. These are simply the equations I've typed in to uh, define the action of the uh, custom spring. So let me just run this model. Oh, by the way, we also have the effect of convection due to ambient temperature on the spring as well. So this represents a thermal boundary condition of say 293 kelvins, so that's simply room temperature, and that helps to regulate the temperature of the spring due to convection. And here we have the results of the system. Here we have the temperature of the spring. This is the spring constant. This represents the displacement of the mass, and this is the velocity of the mass. As you can see, the effect of temperature dependency, the temperature dependency has uh, uh, a very interesting effect on how the spring and the mass system moves. Now, we're nearing the end of this webinar, and there's just one more thing that to talk about. A significant proportion of our work is with the automotive sector, and we have helped a lot of automotive engineers to build high fidelity models of vehicle subsystems and entire systems. A key area of research is battery modeling for electric or hybrid vehicles. Um, generally, the chemical reactions in the battery, whether it's a lithium ion battery or a lead acid battery, generates heat due to the chemical reaction stoichiometry. However, the battery needs to be kept cool in order to maintain its operational effectiveness. How the battery is cooled is a big area of research and is one of the projects that our engineers have worked on. So let me just show you this uh, model within MapleSim. So, in this model, we're converting the energy lost from battery during the charge and discharge cycle to heat. Actually, this isn't the model I wanted. Let me just see if I can find it again. Uh, this is the model I wanted. So, in this model, we're converting the energy lost in a lithium ion battery designed for an electrical uh, vehicle into heat. It consists of a number of high level subsystems. So this is the main battery subsystem. This represents the load on the vehicle. This represents the motor drive controller. And this is the battery state of charge controller. So let's dive into this, the battery component. So we're using thermal components to define the thermal mass of the battery and the ambient temperature in the battery compartment and the conductive and convective heat transfer models are implemented to determine the heat flow and temperature profile throughout the system. So this battery thermal model consists of two lithium ion cells here. These cells have electrical connectors, thermal connectors and signal flow connectors. We're also modeling the casing of the lithium ion battery as well. The cells generate heat, and that heat is conducted to the outer casing. Now, 
this is one of them lithium ion cells. This is actually a fairly pretty accurate model of a lithium ion battery. Um, the battery model is actually an electrochemistry based automotive battery based upon porous electrode theory. It takes into account concepts such as the battery state of charge, the mass transport, the lithium intercalation and the diffusion process, different electrochemistries, uh, and so on. This is actually a custom component which models the thermochemistry of the lithium ion cell, and it consists of a large number of equations, differential equations. As you can see, this is a fairly large, complex model. How we've derived these equations is fully documented in a journal article that I'll point out later. Now, I think, and this is the journal article which documents how we've uh, derived the thermochemistry of the lithium ion battery and Im implemented it in our model. So that brings me very neatly near to the end of our webinar. What I would like to do is actually point out the Maple Sim model gallery. This is the URL. It's an online repository of Maple Sim models. They're free to download. The models have been developed by us in house, and they've also been contributed by our customers as well. All the models are available free of charge, so you can just click and download them. You don't even have to log in. They're all freely available. If you do have any questions, you can either ask our online uh, support guide, John May, or feel free to contact us. If you would like to ask the applications group uh, any questions at all, this is our email address.